from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Ernie DeCiccio. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from the estate of Margaret and Edmund Morris. This Mass is offered for all the deceased members of the Morris, Jordan, Gaynor, and McKellistrim families, all of whom came from Ireland 175 to 200 years ago. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God. Rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we continue our journey of Lent, let's uh, prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist. First, by thanking God for journeying with us for being with us always and everywhere. And let's also call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and for peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Enlighten, O God of compassion, the hearts of your children sanctified by penance, and in your kindness grant those who stir to a sense of devotion a gracious hearing when they cry out to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, to fall down and worship the statue that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary, and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. The young men walked around in the midst of the flames, singing hymns to God and blessing the Lord. But the angel of the Lord came down into the furnace to be with Azariah and his companions and drove the fiery flame out of the furnace and made the inside of the furnace as though a moist wind were whistling through it. The fire did not touch them at all and caused them no pain or distress. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. 
he said to his counselors, Was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. He replied, But I see four men unbound, walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire, and the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed, their tunics were not harmed, and not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies, rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a place, a permanent place, in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you look for an opportunity to kill me, because there is no place in you for my word. I declare what I have seen in the Father's presence. As for you, you should do what you have heard from the Father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing what Abraham did. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are indeed doing what your father does. 
They said to him, we are not illegitimate children. We have one father, God himself. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me for I came from God and now I am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. In listening to that uh, first reading today from the book of the prophet Daniel, it brought back memories of me being uh, a young reader at mass and every reader would live in fear of that reading. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. A big shout out to our reader at the mass today for getting it right. <laughs> but it's not about their names. It's about this wonderful miracle that God worked. And God worked his miracle to teach us that there is one God only. And they were so right to worship only him. They would rather be thrown into the fiery furnace than worship another God. That takes courage, of course. That takes faith. And they had this unshakable faith in God. They were ready to be burned to death, but God saved them. They weren't testing God, by the way. They didn't go in there saying, oh, of course God's going to save us. No, they were ready to give up their life. And God did save them. And hopefully by that miracle, some of the witnesses were brought to the faith as well. All the miracles of history from the time of the prophets and certainly in Jesus' own time and throughout these 2,000 years of Christianity, when saints have performed miracles, it's all been to lead us to faith. And hopefully this journey of Lent that we've undertaken has increased our faith. Now in the gospel, we have Jesus arguing with some people who thought they had faith. But how could they have faith that they wanted to kill Jesus, the Son of God, who had never done anything wrong, who had only come down from heaven to serve and to love. It's interesting to hear the, the dialogue, really more of an argument actually between Jesus and his detractors. We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. Talk about rewriting history. They were slaves in Egypt. They were slaves to the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans. <laughs> But as Jesus teaches, that slavery is only a physical slavery. And many people do suffer from physical slaveries even now, from all kinds of addictions and even emotional health issues. But what Jesus gets to is the slavery to sin. Anyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. Oh, I know what you're gonna say, I can't help myself but we can. There's not too much we have control over in our life, but we can choose whether we're going to do good or evil. We can choose whether we're going to try to be righteous or unrighteous. We can choose whether we're going to live in peace or make war. We can choose whether we're going to love or hate. Too many people make the wrong choice. Too many people choose the dark side. Thankfully, we have countless opportunities for change. Even as faithful Catholics, we go to confession and usually once in our life is not enough because we keep repeating the same things. But we have a merciful God who every time we fail is ready to reach out to us, welcome us back, and embrace us like the prodigal son. But hopefully, as we journey on, we try to make the right choice, the choice not to sin, the choice not to hurt others or God, the choice to live in peace and in love. 
And no, we're not going to be perfect, of course. But we try all the time to show that we are true children of our Heavenly Father. So then, as we continue our journey of Lent, let's not stop trying. Let's not rest on our laurels thinking we've already gotten there. Let's continue to strive for holiness. Let's continue to love God and neighbor and live in true freedom, freedom from sin as children of our heavenly God. And now let's offer our prayers to the Lord our God who always hears us and answers us. For those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those seeking a deeper awareness of God in their life this Lenten season, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. All over the Catholic world, we have men, women, and even children preparing for the Easter sacraments. So in a special way, let's pray for uh, the catechumens that these final days of preparation will bring them great growth in faith and in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's remember all those who are sick or suffering, whether in body, mind, or spirit, especially those in hospitals and nursing homes or confined to their own homes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And always we pray for peace, for an end to war and violence, for an end to hatred and division, for peace on earth, for peace in the church, for peace in our families, and for peace in our troubled hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask you to hear these and all of our prayers, which we offer to you through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Receive back, O Lord, these sacrificial offerings which you have given to be offered to the honor of your name, and grant that they may become remedies for our healing through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now let's join together in prayer using the words that Jesus, our Savior, gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heavenly med medicine, that they may purge all evil from our heart and strengthen us with eternal protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.